I was kind of a weird kid growing up because I didn't really want a girlfriend. I always wanted a wife. What I thought I wanted in a future spouse has changed quite a bit throughout my life. And that's what I want to talk about today, my future wife list. Growing up, I felt like I had a pretty good list of what I wanted in a future wife. I grew up in a Hispanic household, so I expected myself to marry a Latin girl who spoke Spanish, knew how to cook as well as my mother, and played video games. I was a pretty nerdy kid growing up, and I played a lot of video games, so I also wanted my wife to be a gamer. But this list didn't really matter since I didn't date at all growing up, because honestly I was too scared to talk to girls. But then, I served a mission. When I came back from the mission, I had two priorities, get an education and get married. I no longer cared if she was Hispanic, because I went to BYU, and BYU is more white than Wonder Bread. I still really wanted my wife to speak Spanish, but this became a plus and not a requirement during dating. For some reason, I really wanted to marry a return missionary, maybe because I just had finished mine, and I felt that I could relate more to an RM. I also wanted a girl that was going to college, and more specifically, a BYU girl, because I was going there already. I didn't want anything to do with those heathen U of U girls. And that pretty much sums up what I was looking for in a wife until I graduated college. After graduating college, I realized something. I was kind of picky. Looking back, I realized I wouldn't ask most girls out because they didn't fulfill this or that requirement. I realized that being a return missionary doesn't make you a better person at all. And the same thing goes for whichever college you attended. I started to see what I really wanted in a future spouse is the things that I already had in myself, which comes down to three things. First, they must have a sense of humor and be able to laugh at the hardships in life because that's how I tend to deal with them also. Next, they have to strive to live the gospel. I'm not perfect, however, I do try my best to be better every day and that's something I look for in someone else. Lastly, they have to be independently happy with themselves, meaning that they don't need someone or something in particular to give them joy, but instead that joy comes from themselves and their relationship with God. This has been a process for me and something that I still struggle with sometimes, but something that I strongly admire in others. In conclusion, I don't think that having a list is necessarily bad, as long as it's short and sweet, and that it also applies to you as much as it does to them. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it helps you find the best person for you. Remember to subscribe to continue watching more videos, and I'll talk to you later.